it is so frustrating when the person that you're wanting to be with or the person that you're manifesting is showing up as highly avoidant. They can't communicate properly, they disappear, they um, are hot and cold, they don't tell you how they're feeling, they don't respond to your messages, they are dismissive, you can share your feelings and they either don't respond or they don't say the right thing or they belittle it or whatever it is that they're doing that is showing you that they are highly avoidant. Okay, so that can be really frustrating and you can feel very angry about that when we're we're experiencing someone who is basically not showing up for us and, you know, not responding to us in a way that makes us feel safe. We're, first of all, expecting them to be and do something for us um, and it's almost like we're, rocket, we're knocking on the wrong door and uh, really frustrated because it won't open. Um, and a lot of my clients have come to me very angry with their specific person whenever they experience this um, version of them. And what I try to say to them about this is to really, first of all, have compassion for yourself and it can really help to have compassion for them. And the analogy that I like to use about this is if you saw your specific person walking down the street and they're carrying loads of buckets of water, right? They're, they're exhausted, they're really tired because they're carrying all these buckets of water. You wouldn't look at them and think, right, now's a really good time to try and have an emotionally deep conversation with them um, because you can see that they're busy, they're exhausted, they haven't got the energy or the capacity to do it right now. You'd probably think, all oh, right, they're, they're busy and they look really tired, I'll, I'll leave them to that. They've got to put their buckets of water down before it's the right time for me to go and speak to them and it's not my fault. It's not my fault that they're carrying all that water. You see, the thing is that with avoidance, all it is is that they are full of their stuff. They are avoidant because they are scared. They are avoidant because they have got their own fears, their own insecurities. They don't know how to express their feelings because they haven't been taught. They don't know how to feel safe in intimate relationships. And so they do things like dismiss you, ignore you, go hot and cold. They don't know how to express things in an emotionally mature way because they haven't got the, emotionally, the emotional ability or the emotional skills to do that for themselves. Themselves. So often we're, we're, we go towards someone like this because that's familiar to us. We're not used to being met emotionally. Look at your childhood. How many times were you honestly met, really emotionally present with someone that you needed that from in that moment, in those moments? If that wasn't there and if you experienced, you know, distance, your parents were busy, they, they were absent, there was um, chaos in your family, it's very likely that you were not met emotionally. So you don't have that in your vicinity of experience to know what that is like. So very often we go towards people who are familiar, who can't meet us emotionally. And the thing is that we don't have the, the consciousness to know that actually what we need is very, very bare minimum normal. What we're asking from someone is very normal and very just what we'd expect in a relationship to be met emotionally. But when we go towards someone who's carrying loads of buckets of water because they haven't taken the time to look at it, to pour it out, to express it, they don't know how, they haven't been taught, we're asking someone who cannot do that for us. We're, we're asking someone who is not there yet and it isn't our job to make them put their buckets of water down. It's not our job to um, force them to do that, to, to, to make them see, you know, as much as we might want to. But we can see that they just are where they are. They are where they are. And they, in their own time, can put down those buckets of water. And when they do, you will see that there has never been anything wrong with you. There's nothing you need to prove you're good enough, you always have been, they admire you, they respect you, 
you don't need to force them. And in fact, you know, it's like if you're trying to force them to have a connection with you and to meet you emotionally, where they're carrying all these buckets of water, you're basically going up saying, what? why aren't you talking to me? Why aren't you um, loving me? Why aren't you telling me these things? Why aren't you meeting me emotionally here? Why can't you do this? And they're like, oh my God, I'm so tired. I'm so exhausted. I don't know how. I haven't got the capacity because I've, I've got all this stuff from the past that I'm carrying in these buckets. I don't know how. And they get overwhelmed and they just run away. You see, that that's kind of what it's like. So it's is being able to have the compassion for yourself right the compassion for yourself that yes you do want to be emotionally met and yes you do want to share emotional intimacy and yes you do want that connection but also being able to have the the visual awareness to be able to see this person is avoidant right now not necessarily forever but right now that's what they're showing up like and that's okay it doesn't mean anything about me. It doesn't mean anything about what they think about me. It doesn't mean anything about the potential of our relationship. But it means that right now, they're just carrying a lot of buckets of water. Otherwise, they wouldn't be showing up in an emotionally immature way. You know, like if they were emotionally mature, for example, they would be able to say to you something like, you know, um, I... I'm going through a lot. I actually don't feel ready or capable right now to be able to meet you where I know and believe you deserve and need to be met. And the the problem is, even if, say, someone has said that to you, you can see where you're at by being able to see that you're still craving that from someone who can't give it to you. You're still craving them to do it. You're still wanting it from them that's that's probably familiar that's probably your emotional familiar pattern from your childhood from your you know your experience of life wanting something from someone who could not and was not available to give it to you at that time um that's the childhood stuff that's where self love comes in that's where releasing that trauma comes in that's where being able to meet yourself being able to self soothe being able to hold yourself in those moments and it doesn't mean that that relationship can never happen, but your ability to self-soothe and to validate your emotions, validate your needs and see that, of course, you need that connection. Of course, you need that emotional intimacy. Of course, you want that bond, right? Of course, you want that. And that's normal. But asking it from someone who is is not emotionally available right now is not about you. It's not your fault. And this is where the, the game changes, right? This is where your manifesting ability becomes really powerful because you start seeing that you're enough, you're good enough, and that you can have love and compassion for where this person is in their life right now and let them be there. Let them go through what they need to go through in order for them to get tired enough to put those buckets of water down, right? but they will not do it if we're trying to force them to do it. The more we try and force them to do it, the, the more they cling onto it, the more they run away, the more they find, they find ways of filling the water up and then, you know, whatever it is that they do. But it's not your fault. They've got their stuff. But you are changing your narrative by understanding that your needs of emotional intimacy and connection is something that is very normal, and, and you can expect in a relationship, it's just that you haven't expected it actually in the past because of maybe your experience in childhood. And by the way, I'm saying this like a blanket thing and I don't know you who's watching this. I might know you if you're one of my clients. Um, I don't know anything about your story, your past. So you have to take this understanding that I'm saying like a blanket message only take what resonates with you and what makes sense to you. And if you need to talk to me or you need to talk to someone, then please do that. And this is the sort of thing that we do cover and talk about in the Conscious Creators Masters Academy is being able to learn to shift into knowing and expecting your needs to be met and being able to have compassion and love for someone for where they are without needing them to be different. Because when we can love them from that unconditional place, from that place of acceptance, um, it's a beautiful place and it actually starts to make the avoidant feel safer. It starts to make the avoidant feel more comfortable with you because you're not forcing or pressuring them like inevitably is what happened in their childhood. 
yeah when someone's expecting them controlling them wishing they were different all of that what you're doing by accepting them for where they are in their life right now is showing them that another way is possible i can be loved for who i am my fear is acceptable my fear is okay it makes sense given what i've been through and when you can love someone for where they are even if it doesn't make complete sense to you, because often with the avoidance, it doesn't make any sense because we don't ever hear the whole story until they're willing to put the buckets down and actually express to you <laughs> what's happening. Um, you know, it's it's really uncomfortable because you, you only hear half the story. And when you're anxious, it's very uncomfortable because you want the whole story. So it's be, it's about being able to soothe yourself. By the way, this anxious avoidant dynamic is extremely common. And it's one of the things that actually helps us to heal. So I hope this video has given you some like lights in understanding what this anxious avoidant dynamic is and where the avoidant is at and where you're at. You know, you have to go on a journey to soothing yourself. You have to go on a journey to expecting your needs to be met by surrounding yourself with people who validate that. This is why, by the way, the Conscious Creators is amazing because it gives you the experience of being seen, being understood, your feelings being accepted by a family-like atmosphere, you know? So it's recreating what is safe and normal to us in our nervous system. And that's why it's really, really powerful. So if you would like to um, learn to create this new nervous system pattern so that you can understand and expect more in your in your relationship so that you can have deeper empathy for your specific person, let them be where they're at, they will evolve. Um, if you'd like some help with that, uh, there's still some spaces on the Conscious Creators Masters Academy. I'd love to help you. And if you have any questions about that, we can answer them in a free discovery call. Or you can email me or you can book your space directly on the website. So thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.